All right, so we start recording. I'd like to take a minute uh, to introduce um, tonight um, Luke from uh, Team 7657 um, and Chris uh, Gibson, the principal from New Tech Institute out of Evansville, Indiana. Uh, New Tech, uh, the Thunderbots, uh, were on the winning alliance at our um, at our last FRC event, our last official FRC event, uh, the Bloomington uh, District event. Uh, they are one of our Toyota teams down in the Evansville region, and were one of the first to uh, accept the challenge of uh, helping us out, providing some content for our coaches clinics. And I want to thank both of them. Uh, some experiences they had this fall with some things they did. They want to share with all of you. Uh, I think you'll, some of you will recognize the story of uh, running into some trouble and then working hard to kind of build up on that sustainability piece. Uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna share my screen and let Luke and uh, uh, Chris Gibson take over. So here we go. All right. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, so hopefully everybody can see. Luke, can you, and it's loading, it's loading, it's loading. All right, so Luke, can you see the screen? Is it is it the slide yeah, that's all good. filled up? And it's all go, filled up. I'm gonna go all the way back to the very beginning. Get to see a sneak peek of it in review, in there reverse, we there we go. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna mute myself. Um, along the way, if you have any questions, feel free to type up something in the chat. I'll kind of monitor that and we can ask questions at the end. So uh, without further ado, here we go. All right. Thanks, Chris. And again, I'm Chris Gibson. I'm principal of New Tech High School. And Luke Fernbacher is a junior at New Tech. And um, Luke, just jump in there. And I, I don't want to scare you off by saying it's a 24 slide deck. It's really just sort of helping us uh, script things as we go along. So just a very quick overview. We're a small high school of about 250 students. We started, this is year four for us. We saw some success, as Chris mentioned, um, in year two. We paused last year and we have no coach. Well, we had no coach for this season. And so we had the choice to either fold or commit boldly to FRC. And so hopefully this story will kind of tell us, you know, kind of tell the story of what happened. So the two coaches this year are Luke, who's a junior on the team, and me. So it, it, we don't have an official coach, but um, that's kind of how we put things together. And so um, after talking with Chris, you know, just thinking like, how can we get some of the community behind us? Uh, he had the idea, and I had seen it also. And so he helped with the kind of flesh out the idea of having an open house. And so our goal was like, you know, if we can raise $1,000, that would be great. And so we'll invite some people from the community, some um you know, dignitaries, the mayor, things like that, and see what we can do. And so next slide. So we had some planning meetings with students and then um, coaches uh, to brainstorm ideas. And so Luke and I met several times. And then we also met with two students two different times to plan the setup. Um, so that's how we started. And I put this in here just so that you know kind of what we sent out. Just a very quick email, we invite you to our open house. Please reach out to us for information. We hope to see you there. So that was the extent of what we sent by email. And then um, we invited the mayor and the mayor of Evansville, you know, Evansville is about 130,000 um, people, but our mayor is very uh, gracious about coming to New Tech. His niece actually teaches at New Tech, so that helps, but um, also the superintendent and district officials all the school board members, local state senators and representatives, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, which here is called Evansville Regional Economic Partnership. And um, then also the president and CEO, as well as VPs of Toyota Indiana, since we're of course a Toyota team and some specific people from Toyota. Chris Osborne, we invited, you know, I know it's a, a, a trip from the Indy area to come down, but uh, STEM contacts from local universities. We have a few, sort of friends of new tech and also we literally googled um businesses in the area um you know like banks and manufacturing companies just to try to see so we invited about 70 people um we had about 12 show up which at the time felt a little sparse but it was impactful so that'll kind of come here toward the end as to how impactful it was and Luke, you can jump in anytime. There are pictures of Luke coming up too. So 
the, our overview was that we had a welcome table and student presentations, how you can help. And then we did it at 6 p.m. So we didn't want people to go hungry. Um, and then we also had some tour guides. And so that welcome table um, was the first stop. And so actually Luke's dad and I were at the welcome table and we shared information about first. And we also had a video of a competition running in the background so that if somebody had never experienced first robotics before they could see from the very beginning what it involved. And then we had um, four different stations for um, student presentations. Uh, and really the pictures will probably do more justice, um, but mechanical, electrical, programming. And so that was, those are sort of all together. And then we had a robot demonstration where we could actually have people get hands on the bot, you know, and um, from infinite recharge, you know, to be able to shoot the payload, you know, we, we wanted them to be able to get their hands on the controller and actually operate the robot. And so there's a picture of, five of our students and you can see there to the right um, the mechanical electrical and coding tables we had a rolling promethean board that had the code up there so just making it transparent here's what we do in first and then next slide um, so aaron and luke uh, were showing the chief of staff of evsc uh, the controls of the robot so he actually got to shoot the payload you know we had us um a mock area up set up there. So um, he was able to actually shoot the payload into the uh, target. And then um, Senator Jim Toms, who represents this area, he's a state senator. Um, he and his wife Margie um, visited. And so there again, you have a state senator who sits in the state house in the legislature um, interacting with our students in robotics. And that was just huge to be able to do. And there, Senator Toms is operating the robot with Aaron and Luke. Um, and to get his hands on the robot, I think that just really drives home what FIRST Robotics is all about. And of course, Luke and Aaron are chatting him up. They did an outstanding job of, um, you know, explaining what FIRST is and also what they were doing with the challenge. And I felt that was a really important part too, was getting these people to know what FIRST is. Cause I'd say there was one person that came in there um, which was um, Chris Melvin from Toyota that knew what FIRST is. The rest of them really didn't know what FIRST is. So not only did it help give outreach to know that we have a robotics team, but it also really reached out to know that FIRST exists, um, which was really good to have as well. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and it just helps, you know, to have these informal conversations and, and granted, you know, it can get pretty technical, but you can kind of adjust that to the audience. So here's here are Preston and Justice, uh, two of our seniors talking with our superintendent. And our superintendent is extremely supportive. And I think, you know, but for him to know everything that goes on at 40 schools is, a, I mean, it's it's just a huge job. So, you know, he was gracious enough to come out there. He is operating the robot. Um, again, he was able to, to operate it and um, shoot the payload into the target. Um, and also got a lot of great um, FaceTime with, with Luke and with Aaron there as well. And so then sort of in the background in one of the pictures, we had a how you can help tape. So um, our finance and grant mentor was there and she's not afraid to ask for help because she point blank asked the superintendent, how can you help us financially or um, you know, with materials? So a nice ask, but a direct ask. Um, and he put up his finger, said, just a minute, looked at his phone and he said, Chris, can you take a phone call tomorrow at 1030? And I, I mean, if your boss says, can you take a phone call tomorrow at 1030? You're going to say, yes, Dr. Smith, I'll be glad to take a phone call at 1030. And so um, that was a very generous offer of help there. Um, we had a wish list. We offered, you know, what kind of mentor assistance could we get and what kind of financial assistance could we get? And then refreshments and then also tour guides. We had it in our all-purpose room at school and so it was away from where Luke's sitting right now in the robotics room but if someone was you know wanting to do look at the technical part and see the robotics room we had tour guides who would help them do that so the turnout was small but very effective and you kind of saw from the um, 
pictures that our superintendent and the chief of staff and his entire family attended. Also, Senator Mrs. Toms, several representatives from Toyota Motor Manufacturing Indiana, a friend of New Tech who helps a lot with STEM and entrepreneurial pursuits, and then also um, one of our literally somebody that we Googled, uh, a representative from a small local plastics company just showed up and we were very glad for her to show up and we're connecting with her to, again with mentorship and with um, you know product uh, requests and so we again remember we were hoping that well if we can get a thousand dollars it would be great and it's it's not necessarily measured by the price tag but we got offers of mentorship and assistance I think probably the biggest takeaway was the increased awareness, you know, of first and of new tech. Um, we got two new laptops and total cash and in-kind donations of $27,500. And I don't put that number out there to brag or to say, look at us, but just, we were hoping to get a thousand dollars and with 12 people who came um, and we asked and we built the case that, you know, we're, we're here in Evansville, we're, we're working on STEM, we have a small core of students who are really dedicated to FIRST. And I think we made the case that, you know, we're worth investing in. And so the reason I put that out there is, you know, it was a lot of work um, to put together, but it has helped sustain us now, you know, that we aren't thinking like, are we gonna make it to next year financially? Or, you know, we definitely have a sense of momentum after having had that open house. And so, um, to give you some idea, um, at Boilerbot Battle, our old laptop um, did an update, and we almost didn't make it to the next round because the laptop had to do an update, and it was, you know, I don't know, it, it, it is a little bit more up to date than DOS, but it, it was pretty ancient. And so um, we built the case that if we could really have a, a one new laptop, and then our superintendent said, well, what about if one goes down, would you like a second one? And so, you know, things like that, that just, um, that was just such a gracious offer. And then uh, hotel and transportation costs, obviously, you know that are high. And so um, our superintendent said, I wanna make sure that every student who wants to go can go. And another one of our community uh, partners mentioned the same thing as well. So that's the impact. And then the next slide shows a little bit more. Um, so Preston, you saw in one of those um, some of the pictures he met someone at the gym with his because Preston works at a gym they saw his new tech robotics shirt so uh, this person owns a small fabrication company that does def that's my typo defense contracting he couldn't attend the open house but we had a zoom meeting um, and they were going to come out but they kind of COVID went through the whole company so um, we shared about the team and the challenge they gave us ideas about the challenge and now they're saying like, we think we can get you uh, a deal on some hotel rooms. Um, you know, so again, we're just building that case for what we need and our community partners are, are helping out because again, they said, we don't want any student not to be able to attend because of financial reasons. And so then the ripple impact of that is the Eastside Optimus Club um, got wind of our open house. And so we were the, one of the featured speakers at that, Luke, and I turned it over to Luke to do. Um, so a junior in high school, speaking in front of a bunch of community members, uh, he did an awesome job. And then from that as well, um, the Evansville Regional Economic Partnership, like our Chamber of Commerce, uh, has invited us to a regional community breakfast to highlight FIRST and New Tech and Toyota and Vincent University. And so I have a meeting tomorrow to discuss that but that's at the casino here in Evansville and it's described as like 50 CEOs from the region and so we get a chance to talk to first you know to a larger audience so remember that choice we could fold or we could uh, commit boldly to first and so we've obviously decided to do the second one so of course we're going to still look for grants and we still have plenty of work to do but this open house built awareness but it also built the case that you know, here's something uh, worthy of students who are doing great work and a great program in FIRST Robotics. Um, so it's helping with our sustainability to ensure that we uh, continue to thrive. So 
again, a 24 slide Google presentation. I don't want that to scare anybody off, but that's the last slide. So um, that was just really a script to kind of give you from start to finish what we did. So I've done a lot of talking. I'll turn it over to Luke or uh, any questions that you have. Well, I'll go with the questions first and then I'll kind of wrap it up if we want. Yeah, great. Uh, if anybody has any questions, um, again, you can feel free to uh, drop something in the chat or feel free to turn off that microphone and, and ask away. There's also a little uh, a reaction area um, where you can raise your hand. So if you want to do the little hand raise or, or actually if your camera's on, literally do that or whatever. Um, I definitely 100% want to take full credit for the open house, but to be fair, uh, we've had a lot of teams out there um, pull off really successful open houses. We have some, I, I know we have some mentors here on the call this evening whose teams have done open houses and have some uh, similar uh, stories. Uh, and maybe some of you have, have not uh, dove into that. Uh, Luke, just looking back at the experience, um, was was the work leading up to it uh, worth it? Oh yeah, most definitely. Like anything in first, even if it's not successful, is I would even say well worth it because it's not just, <clears throat> even if it didn't go well, <clears throat> I still would have gotten out of how do I reach out? Like I was making phone calls to companies and being like, hey, I need to speak to a representative about this. And then he'd be like, okay, please hold. And it kind of got the idea of, okay, so this is how you get to a company and talk to someone about sponsoring. I learned how to write more formal emails. And it really also, I mean, anytime you talk in front of someone, it expands your talking skills, but especially with people like that are really important community members. It really helps um, talking in front of people as well, so. <clears throat> what's, one, what's one surprising thing? What, what kind of surprised you uh, at the outcome? I mean, we saw the numbers, you were hoping for a thousand and, and we saw that fantastic number of 27.5 in terms of in-kind plus uh, money. Um, was there anything else that kind of stood out to you afterwards going, wow? Definitely we may have not had like the turnout, like as of the people that we invited, but the people that did come were very important. And it was really surprising to see how much that little bit of outreach really expanded knowledge. And even after the fact, it's kind of still got a domino effect going where we'll still get an email like, hey, so after that open house, we heard about this from this person and we'd want you to come talk to this group. And it's really just got a ball rolling that now um, hearing that we have someone wants to talk in front of us isn't as surprising as it used to be. Like people are starting to really get to know what FIRST is and it's surprising how much community members enjoy STEM activities like that and are willing to participate not just financially, but time like into STEM activities like that and really get youth going in something like this. Well, good, good. Well, I asked a few questions. I don't know if we've got any other folks on the, the call that um, just kind of, I don't know if, if you want to do like a, a thumbs up or a literal or use your little uh, thumbs up tool down here. Do we have some folks on who um, have, uh, as a team or have done open houses before thumbs up yeah we have or thumbs down no we've never we've never done that before no i know there's a few yeses out there uh because i see the people who are on and i know for a fact that they've done them um the uh ah scott very good um yeah i think that um one of the things that i've heard from some of the teams that have done them is um, it, it can take a couple of years to build some momentum to kind of growing that the audience, right? Um, I, I think, and also to be fair, the turnout you all had, I'm sure COVID had nothing to do with it. Ha ha. Um, you know, that you're trying to do a, a gathering in a time when, you know, things are kind of questionable, but, um, but yeah, so I think that's, uh, that's fantastic that you guys, made that outreach 
um, and then continue to follow up with them. I definitely think one of the other key pieces to a really successful open house um, or any kind of outreach that you do and you get these specific folks in is sending that thank you card, right? Um, and also any of those donors, if they're in kind or if they're um, straight financial donors, uh, the, the, you know, thanking appropriately. A lot of people don't necessarily think about that in the in kind of the giving sector is that there's, you know, a lot of you have probably put together sort of your giving levels on your team, uh, sponsor levels, right? So, you know, $500, you're on our t-shirt for a thousand dollars, you'll be on our, our pit banner and our t-shirt, et cetera, et cetera, right? $5,000, you'd be on our robot. Um, one of the things you also might want to keep in mind is what are your thanking levels? That, that could be an internal document, right? That, if somebody gives us 50 or a hundred dollars, we'll send them nice, you know, a thank you note or whatever. But for that company that sends, you know, that $5,000 gift, or even if it's an individual, right, what could you do for them differently? So uh, if you have an end of the year uh, banquet, like a lot of teams and, and uh, groups do, you know, that might be nice to invite them to your banquet. Uh, make sure you invite these folks, Luke and Chris, and, and those of you who do open houses, you continue the relationship uh, in normal years, right? You'd invite them to competitions um, and uh, to your shop and to other things. Great. No questions? Good. Well, I, I hope you all got a little bit out of this. Um, all right, Scott, I see you unmute, unmuted yourself. Yeah, what we do on our open houses, um, we have two of them. We have one at the beginning of the season for, for new students and new uh, applicants for mentors. And then after the build season done, before we start competitions, we have a, another open house. But in that, in that case, we invite our sponsors and any potential donors that may be on our list to come and we do the, uh, our robot reveal show them what the game is, go through how the team structure works. And some of the kids on the team talk about what their responsibilities are. So we kind of, we kind of combine both the reveal and the open house to, for our sponsors in one, in one setting there. And it's worked for us pretty well. So I like that. That's, that's an, a, another, yeah. that's, I was gonna say, that's another idea for an open house, the way we've done it in the past. So yeah, it's a it's a recognition. It's sort of a, a thanking the sponsors and giving them a chance to see what you've done with their money. Uh, now, of course, some of the money you're spending maybe is not necessarily directly related to the robot, but they can see what these kids have been working on. Uh, yeah, and that's a fun event. And then I think each it sounds like each year this has become kind of a tradition. And so if you can build, yep. however you're going to create your team's uh, uh, open house or open houses. Um, you know, you kind of start to own certain weekends and you just make it a, a tradition. Uh, it probably then becomes easier to plan. It's predictable. Yeah, especially when we had the, uh, you know, ship dates, that was always the day before the ship date. So, oh, um, yeah. So or now it's like bag and tag, right? So bag nobody, and tag, yeah, yeah, nobody wants to look at it. They used to have to ship years before that. They would have to crate and yep. ship even to go to regionals but yeah now it, it, even with bag and tag nobody wants to look at a robot in a bag so yeah that day before that's a great a great day yeah so now now we just kind of do it whenever we're, we get everything ready and schedule it that way so which yeah. i like it this way much better <laughs> yeah uh, we've heard a lot of uh a lot of people have said uh that they were glad bag uh, and tag days are gone i I'm certainly glad from, especially from an equity standpoint. Well, Scott, thanks for that. Those, th those are great ideas. And, and that, uh, that kind of pre open house idea of recruiting uh, using open house as a potential recruiting tool. Also a great idea uh, inviting uh, like some uh, middle school uh, families, maybe to come see what they're looking at for next year. Um, yeah. There's a lot of different fun things you could do. And we do, uh, we, we, this year we did uh, the student open house. We did a Facebook ad uh, for our area and then made sure we had flyers up at the high school. And uh, we ended up with, I think, five new students out of this last open house 
here in uh, January or in December. So it worked out pretty well for us. Well, that's good. And you're a community based team. And so, um, yes, that's one of those differences too for our, that our community based teams face is that they don't necessarily have that easier direct access to students that you, you've got to work a little harder, maybe even to kind of go find them. Um, but uh, when you, when you, your uh, pool of potential students is in one building, I'm not suggesting recruiting is easier. Um, uh, I just want everybody to know, like from what Scott's saying from the Facebook ads, although um, the idea, even for a school-based team utilizing Facebook, uh, you're not going to get the kids, but you're going to get the parents of the kids. And that those parents might say, hey, did you hear about this? You should go check it out. Um, I think we know parents still have a little bit of influence on some of our high school students up until a certain point, um, especially then, especially ninth and 10th graders. I think parents still have some influence. Because yeah, we have a lot of uh, homeschooled kids on our team. So that was a good way to, to connect with them and uh, help, uh, like you said, the sometimes uh, probably two out of the five kids that we got came from homeschooled because their parents saw our Facebook ad. So that definitely does work. And, and being like you said, a community school, we don't have direct access into the, into the school. So it does make it a little bit tougher for us to recruit kids. So yeah, it just helped a little bit. So yeah, well, that's another that's, idea. Yeah. And sometimes that, um, those Facebook ads aren't very expensive. And if you're a community-based program, uh, you can really, the, the, um, the power behind driving an ad on Facebook is that, uh, and the power that Zuckerberg in terms of utilizing all this data that Facebook gathers on you is that it allows an organization like Scott or, or us to actually pinpoint, uh, kind of rifle pinpoint um, ads right to the people you'd really want to see. Now, from a school-based thing, keep in mind, there may be some, uh, like your principal, uh, or there may be some other groups within your school that have kind of some large, uh, maybe even closed Facebook groups that might be boosters, or the parent might run, the principal might kind of have control over like the specific school account. Generating a quick little blurb or ad in there um, can usually generate quite a bit of interest. I know we've had a few uh, examples where... Um, high school team, uh, a high school based team was struggling doing some recruiting, doing the traditional things that most of us would do. I'm a former high school teacher myself. We would do a lot of the same things, have a announcement in the normal school announcement thing. We'd maybe, um, you know, put up some posters, things like that, and wasn't really generating the interest, went to the principal with uh, the, um, the blurb to put in the Facebook ad, the next day, students were coming up to this teacher saying, oh, hey, I, I heard about a call-out meeting. When is the robotics call-out meeting? So it can it can really have an impact. Uh, Julie Facet asked, is the 22 governor STEM team application for seniors only? Julie, that's a really good question. Uh, I think we could go to the application. I honestly didn't uh, read over the application in great detail. I saw it. I put a link out saying we should have people apply. Um, uh, to allow as many students as possible to earn this distinct honor, former governor STEM team award winners are not eligible. I, I don't see, I don't see male, female. I'm looking at uh, what kind of school do you go to? High school graduation date overall. Uh, list of advanced placement courses, IB courses, dual credit courses, if you've been in STEM groups, exam scores. So it looks like you've at least had to take uh, the ACT and SAT. Um, my guess is, because it doesn't say this anywhere, my guess would be that it's for seniors, but juniors might be eligible because I know juniors have been probably taking the SAT and ACT. I'll let you know. I'll give it a shot. And if I get Heck through, yeah. I'll let you know. Yeah, I'd say have your juniors and seniors apply. Doesn't say no and have them apply again next year if they don't win. Um, well, great. Scott, thank you for that. those extra pieces. I know, um, you know, there's a lot of different recruiting opportunities at the start of a school year. 
um, where your team could do its own event. Uh, the one thing, if you've never done an event of your own, uh, I think the lesson I kind of took away from this is organize, give it a go, set some basic expectations uh, and see how it works out. Another thing to do would be if, if you are a little intimidated around planning an event, tag onto some other events that maybe are already happening. Uh, I know Nicole Coulomb's on the call. She's with Red Alert. And I know Red Alert for years would um, show up to the uh, Center Grove High School, would do a freshman fro-yo. Uh, so all the freshmen are, would go to the school and that that's they're getting their locker. They're getting tours from some upperclassmen. You know, the whole like, welcome to the building, this big scary place. We're going to try to make it feel nicer for you. And then there'd be, there'd be some clubs and other groups there. Uh, and the, the robotics team would show up with its robot and a great recruiting opportunity because it's a kind of a social laid back atmosphere. Uh, and then usually would also take part, uh, they would take part in the like early meet the teacher night because then they're in front of the parents too. Uh, and they're driving a robot around. So if your school's doing stuff like that, getting in front of those groups are always good ideas for uh, recruiting. Uh, and you never know, uh, you, you attend to meet the teacher night or you get somewhere where you're in front of parents. Uh, make sure whenever you are doing outreach, if you're doing a robot demo, make sure you've got those students that are operating the robot, drawing the people in, maybe it's kids and you're letting them have their try at the robot, but make sure you've got other students on your team getting out and around and talking to the other folks that are there, the, the adults uh, and you know, maybe even practice and get there and say, oh, I see your kids are here. What school do they go to? What grade are they in? Let them know that there's a mentoring program, that you're always looking for mentors. Uh, we're, we're always looking for sponsors because you just don't know that that parent is standing there with their kid and they're, the, the kid's playing with the robot. And that parent might be a decision maker at a local engineering firm or another company that's a potential sponsor or mentor. Uh, so that, that always be strategic about doing your outreach. Uh, and I, I love, honestly, I, I just love the how you can help table. Uh, I went to a uh, open house uh, several years ago in Bedford at the Lawrence County 4-H, and they had a similar setup to what Chris and Luke were doing with different robot demos. They had sort of a pit set up, but it was to show how sponsors would get recognized with pit banners and on the robots and things. And then they had uh, students who would guide people around uh, and they were targeting specific people in their community and that those people weren't leaving without being asked for something. Uh, so that would be the last piece I guess I would say is don't forget to ask. Uh, and it's not that you're begging. It's that you're giving them an opportunity to be generous. So. Well, good. <clears throat> 